Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I'm fixing up a generator indoors while no one's home so I don't have to freeze out in the 19 degree weather and I thought I'd make a quick video on like six or seven different reasons why your generator might not be producing power. Let's get into it. Okay, this might seem like a very obvious one but the first thing to check is to make sure that your circuit breaker is on or not tripped. Um, I actually get quite a few emails about this, people just wondering, hey, I don't have any power to my generator, can you help me out? And then I'll get an email about an hour later saying, never mind. <laughs> so um, I'm pretty sure that this is it. Uh, I've done it once with an inverter generator. It had two on off switches for something and I had one off and one on and uh, I got them mixed up. So it's just a simple thing. Make sure to uh, check that and uh, let's get on to the next one. All right, the next reason I've never had it happen to me or any of the generators that I've worked on over the years, but your generator might lose its residual magnetism within uh, the motor itself in here. Um, I will put a link in the description to Steve's small engine uh, saloon and repair on how to basically flash the field with a corded drill. I don't own a corded drill, I have a cordless drill, uh, but you can basically plug, have the generator running, plug the cord of the generator into the outlet here and remove the bit from the chuck. And then I believe you have it in forward. Um, the drill on forward and then you with your hand you like hold the trigger down and then because it won't run because you don't have power and then you flick the chuck counterclockwise with your other hand you only have to do that a couple times and it should flash the field with some electromagnetic um, pulses through there and get everything up and running again so check out that video down below if that's something you think you might have going on with yours while we're at it if you can think of any reasons that i miss in this video as to why your generator might not be uh, putting out any power, go ahead and leave that in the description below. Let's help each other out, thanks. All right, the third thing that you might have going on is that your brushes are worn down or defective. And the brushes are gonna be down in here and I'll put a picture overlay showing you uh, what to look at. If you smell smoke, if you, see, if you remove the cover here and you see sparks, um, that is a good indicator that your brushes might have a problem. You're gonna have to remove those and replace those. All right, the next one is back to the circuit breaker, you would just want to make sure that this is not defective. So um, it might be on, but it might be broken. So a uh, way you can check is if you're able to access into this, uh, mine's a little more complicated to get into, but basically if you can put a multimeter, uh, set it to continuity, so the little horseshoe looking thing on the dial and to where you touch the two leads and it beeps, go ahead and put the two prongs um, on the uh, circuit breaker, on the two prongs on the circuit breaker as well. Put the two leads on the two prongs on the circuit breaker. And um, when it is in the off position, it should not be conducting electricity. So it should not beep, it'll just say OL. When you turn it to on, it should beep and give you a number. So if yours does not do that and you have it in the on position and it won't beep, then you probably have a defective circuit breaker. Go ahead and get that replaced. All right, the next thing you might be looking at is that your AVR or your automatic voltage regulator is bad or defective in some way that um, is beyond our ability to repair it. Um, on a lot of generators, it'll be a crescent moon shaped thing. Usually in the bottom left is where I've seen it a lot of times. Um, this generator is really small, so it's not here. It's actually up in here. And I'll put a picture overlay of what the uh, AVR looks like. All right, the AVR on this generator is that black box right there in the center of the screen right here. And uh, it's, not a ha it's not a crescent moon shape, but it's more of a box. And um, this is for an, definitely an older model generator. Uh, maybe some new ones have ones that, like this, I'm not sure. But uh, I usually buy all of my generators used, fix them up, and flip them. So I don't deal with a lot of newer ones. Now signs that your automatic voltage regulator could be bad include no voltage, low voltage, uh, voltage that does not respond to a load that you put on it, um, assuming that you're not maxing out the capacity of your generator already. Okay, another reason, I don't have a generator in my garage. I've got quite a few generators out there. I don't have any that are brushless. If you have a brushless generator, you have a capacitor underneath when you take the cover off. And, um, your capacitor might be bad. So go check and see if that's bulged out, if it's melted, anything like that. If it looks that way, go ahead and get that replaced. All right, the last reason I'm gonna to cover today is that you might have a bad outlet on your generator. As you can see, I just replaced this. This one should be black like this one. Um, this is the original one, I believe. As you can see, it is completely shattered. This one wasn't shattered up here, but it didn't matter which one I plugged a cord into. The cord would just pretty much fall out with any 
bit of a um, pull on it whatsoever. It had no tension, no friction fit in these uh, in this outlet, so it was just a hazard basically. Got rid of that and um, put a new one in. So make sure that your outlet is good. Um, I did. I've done maintenance for quite a few years, and outlets just go bad for no rhyme or reason. It seems like so. It's a quick and easy fix. Should just cost you a few bucks. Get that taken care of. All right, guys, if this helped you out, um, feel free to give me a like and subscribe. I appreciate your view. I appreciate your support. Take it easy.